Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Genesis chapter 41. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you're interested in the uh, life of Joseph, because Joseph was uh, the main one that had all these dreams, uh, at least in Genesis, then uh, I've got a playlist on the life of Joseph. I don't remember. It's like six or eight Bible studies on it. All right. So Joseph uh, was sold into slavery, into Egypt. Uh, and uh, at this time, the Hiskosk, uh, H-Y-K-S-O-S, -S, I think it's spelled, uh, completely, uh, they were a Semitic group of people related to the Hebrews. Uh, and that point in history has been almost totally deleted from the history of our people. So he was sold into slavery. Uh, he was uh, given a uh, position with uh, Potiphar, the captain of the king's, the pharaoh's uh, guard. And then uh, Pharaoh's, I mean, uh, his Potiphar's wife accused him of trying to rape her. You know, Potiphar was probably, uh, you know, probably in his 50s. And uh, who knows, maybe he married a young woman. She's probably in her 30s. And uh, figured, well, you know, this old guy, he's just not performing as often as I would like to. And she had her eyes on uh, Joseph, who was probably a good-looking guy, you know, young guy. Maybe she was a cougar. I don't know, you know. But uh, she tried to get him in the sack, and he refused. And uh, she accused him of uh, trying to rape her. He went to prison. So that's the backstory. So he's been in prison for two years. So Genesis 41, verse 1. Oh, and by the way, he had uh, interpreted a dream for the um, royal butler and the baker. The baker died, and the butler was restored. And uh, the butler knew that he had interpreted his dream correctly. So let's read the rest of the story. Genesis 41.1, And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. Uh, what's a kine? K-I-N-E. That's just an old English word for cattle. That's all that means. All right, verse 3, And behold, seven other kine, or cattle, came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine, cattle, did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine, so Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, and there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream, and one night I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, 
And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. I don't know. Did he look like a, uh, a hobo, a homeless guy with a, you know, shaved himself? I don't know. Was he unkempt? Uh, changed his clothes. That's what raiment is. So, in other words, when you're getting ready to come in unto the king, you want to be presentable, right? Verse 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I've heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored and as at the beginning, so I awoke. And I saw my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians. Well, that was your first mistake, going to magicians. But there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind are shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Alright, so there's going to be seven good years of plenty of food and then seven years of famine. Verse 29, Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this. All right, so let Pharaoh do this. And let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Forasmuch as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so 
there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. All right, so evidently, uh, Joseph is now the second ruler in charge of the land of Egypt. So uh, Potiphar, the captain of the guard, uh, fair, uh, Joseph is now his boss. Think about that, you know. I wonder what uh, Joseph said unto Potiphar about his wife, you know, casting him into prison, accusing him of rape. I, you know, I'm sure Joseph probably thanked him for treating him quite well and probably told him, you know, look, I didn't try to rape your wife, really. I didn't, you know. But uh, I'm sure he held no ill will towards Potiphar. I imagine Potiphar was probably really scared the first time he met Fair, uh, Joseph after he's promoted to the second in command, you know. Uh, but uh, Joseph had an excellent spirit about him. One of forgiveness. I mean, read, take a look at my study if you're interested in the... Uh, Joseph, a study of forgiveness, that playlist. I mean, it's just, you know, it, just like Joseph forgave others, the Lord forgave us, and the Lord wants us to forgive others for those that trespassed against us. We're not supposed to forgive those that trespass against God. You're not supposed to forgive Satanists. There's a big difference between loving our enemies and loving the enemies of the Lord. Big difference. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. So Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Uh, you know, this sounds exactly like uh, in the book of Daniel. You know, when uh, Daniel interpreted the dream and uh, we're going to get there. And I don't know if you know it, but uh, Egypt grows fi uh, very fine quality linen. If, if you could afford it, Egypt makes some very, very fine linen. Very expensive. Verse 43, And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, oh boy, I, I hate this, Zaphna Fapania, I don't know. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. So I am kind of wondering if this priest was actually a, a Hebrew priest. I don't know. Is it possible that he's of the tribe of Levi? I, you know, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't think that Joseph married an Egyptian of the tribe of, of Ham. I don't think so. Uh, a lot of people want to make you think that, but I don't, I don't believe that for a minute. God was very particular about who married who in Scripture. There's a reason why it says, and so-and-so begat so-and-so who begat so-and-so who begat so-and-so who begat so-and-so begat. Do you know how many times that word begat appears in Scriptures? Uh, a bunch. 
Well, according to uh, the King James Bible Online, begat appears 139 times. I thought it was a lot more than that, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph, uh, oh, I'm sorry. All right, so he got he gave him uh, Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, in the... I believe it's in the book of Leviticus. I read it somewhere. I could be wrong. The high priest couldn't be a high priest until he was 30 years old. 30 years old. If memory serves me correctly, Jesus was 30 years old when he started his ministry. I could be wrong about that too. Don't hold me to it, but... And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering it, numbering, for it was without number. You know, they were measuring it at first, but then, you know. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, Egypt, because of the Nile River, uh, was called the Fertile Crescent. They could grow all kinds of stuff there. Uh, there was, Egypt was always being invaded because it was the breadbasket of the Mediterranean. Uh, the Romans invaded it. The um, uh, Let's see, who was before the Romans? Uh, well, the Greeks invaded it. Uh, who else? The, Phoen uh, the Phoenicians. Oh, and Carthage. Carthage invaded it. Perhaps you've heard of Hannibal invading uh, Italy. Yeah, that was Carthage. Those were the Carthage... Carth Carthage, Carthenian, Carthaginians, I don't know. I suspect that they were tied in with uh, Tyre and Sidon and the Phoenicians. You know, there was a lot of intermarrying going on back in them days. So, But uh, Egypt was always getting invaded. They got invaded by Babylon, uh, I think Assyria too, also. Uh, you know, they were the breadbasket of Europe, uh, the Mediterranean. I mean, that's why everybody wanted Egypt. So, you know, they had uh, good crop land. They had the Nile River that watered all the crops. Um, so they probably had a lot, a lot, a lot of food. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was out without number. Now, something else you may not know. In uh, Egypt, uh, cats were considered sacred. Uh, because, you know, cats would uh, catch and kill rats. Um, C-A-T killed R-A-Ts. I wish we had some cats for Washington, D.C., but uh, that's just my opinion. Verse 50. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine uh, came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bear unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God said, For God, said he, hath made me to forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So Manasseh means uh, made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And then uh, Ephraim means caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Verse 53. And the seven years of Plantius that was in the land of Egypt were ended. All right, so now here we go. 
And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the lands. Now, why would the Lord show us that, uh, you know, store up, uh, store up things for uh, the lean times? Why would Why would the Lord tell us uh, tell Joseph about this? Why? Well, you know, in Matthew twenty four, Jesus even warned that there would be famines. But uh, tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. Oh, we're not going to be here for that. Well, you know what? When they got to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, or they can starve because they didn't prepare, they didn't believe God's word, what do you think they're going to do? Especially when their pastor says, well, you got to take the mark. Well, they're not going to call it that, but well, you got to take it. If you don't take it, how are you going to tithe to me, the church, the pastor? You know, we got to have the building fund. We got to have the missionary fund. We got to have the pastor's Cadillac fund. Yeah. You know, Satan's been planning this for a long, 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 long time. And these idiots don't bother to read the Bible because, you know, hey, uh, the ball game's on TV. Why should I bother? You know, go team. Yeah. You know, the Bible is there for our admonition as a warning. Read Matthew 24. It tells you. But I like uh, Mark chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus speaking, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings, the beginnings of sorrows. Or you could read Matthew 24. So, you know, the Bible is there as a warning. But, uh, you know, I got to admit, the pre-trib rapture, that is Satan's masterpiece. I've, I got to give the devil his due. I got to admit, he's, uh, he is one smart uh, being compared to us humans. Of course, he wasn't very smart um, trying to kill God that's not a very good uh, that's not a very good game plan so you know as far as we're concerned though he's brilliant so what can I tell you all right well that's uh, that's that for that all blessings praise glory and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son Jesus who is the Christ the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.